Hi there, it's Rob from Game Developer Studio. Welcome to the first video preview for the upcoming GDS Plus app. Thanks for putting up with the poor video quality and lack of editing skills in this video. I just wanted to get something out there quick to update you all with some GDS Plus details. So if you've been following me on Discord, you'll know that I've been busy working on a thing called GDS Plus, which is why there have been very few new assets uploaded to the site recently. To summarise, GDS Plus is going to be a new app which you can launch directly from the site and this app will allow me to add expansive and extensive special features to assets for you to enjoy. It also takes care of any complicated tasks and it completely eliminates the need for in-depth knowledge of editing programs like Illustrator, Photoshop or Inkscape. Of course, it's not as powerful as those applications but it targets key functions and simplifies them. In fact, the idea of the app is to be as simple as possible and all the asset features have been parameterized into simple button clicks, sliders and drag and drop functionality. The app you're going to see only runs on Chromium browsers and desktops. So that's Chrome, Edge, Brave and Opera. It does run on Safari but there are still some minor issues. There's no support for mobile yet, it does work on an iPad but anything with a small screen won't be worthwhile. It's also worth noting that the app is pretty much what you see is what you get. I will be making improvements to it over the coming year if it's well received, but please expect bugs to be ironed out slowly over time. The version you're seeing in the video is pre-alpha release with a public alpha coming in the next couple of weeks. So firstly, let's take a look at adding a single basic asset pack. For this example, I'll be adding this magnet asset. Like always, when you download an asset from Game Developer Studio, you'll find the usual .ping files, .svg files. So if you can't be bothered with GDS Plus, you can just carry on as normal. But on newer, special GDS Plus assets, you'll also find an additional folder called GDS Plus. This folder contains a file which you can open into the GDS Plus application. You can also add pings and SVGs. I'll keep it simple for now. When you open the GDS Plus app, you'll be asked if you wish to upload a GDS file or create a new scene. So let's just open the file that we found in the GDS Plus folder from before. As you can see, the contents of the magnet pack have now loaded and we can see all the variations of the magnets included in the asset pack, as well as all the variations that you can't see because you still have to make them. Let me show you some of the basic features behind GDS Plus. Now that the assets are in GDS Plus, you can simply select and position any of the assets that you wish to edit. Under the hood, GDS Plus assets are simply SVGs. That means we get all the benefits of SVGs, including infinite scaling. If you wish to resize an asset, you can simply scale it the way you would expect by dragging the handles of the selection box and you will see how it always keeps a perfect resolution. This might be useful if you wish to set your own dimensions for assets. Sometimes when scaling assets in a game engine, you may notice how the strokes also become scaled. Most of the time this is not an issue, but when you're scaling to a larger degree, the strokes of an asset can become unsightly. And if they become too thick, they can totally ruin the aesthetics of your game scene. To balance a stroke, simply select the asset in the scene to open the inspector. Locate and drag the stroke balance slider until your stroke is at the desired thickness. If we look at an example of two magnets together, you can see that the strokes between the magnets are now totally uneven. And if you use them like this in your game scene, they would probably produce a notable lack of artistic harmony. I'm going to adjust the stroke weights now and look how much better these assets work together when the strokes are balanced. If you're also using art assets from other sites or other artists, you can use the stroke balancing to help better incorporate GDS Plus assets into your game. As well as stroke weights, GDS Plus also offers other fantastic features to help you modify assets. Certain assets will have special selectable features that you can turn on and off depending on your needs. 
By selecting a single asset, you can see if it has special selectable features in the Asset Inspector on the right of the screen. Not all assets have selectable features. I only really add them where I feel they might be necessary or useful to you. Once you've identified if an asset has selectable features or not, simply select the toggle buttons to turn them on and off. You can see on this magnet that you can remove the metallic ends, the colour division, as well as the North and South Pole lettering. I've gone ahead and added a couple more examples of assets with selectable features, like this Apple and this security camera. Here you can see me selecting and unselecting switchable features. One thing that's awkward with SVG editors and SVGs in general is hue and saturation control. GDS Plus offers a powerful colour control for GDS Plus assets. To change an asset colour, select the asset and select a just colour level in the inspector to open the colour editor. You can then change the colour of the assets using the slider. On some assets changing the master colour won't be satisfactory as it will shift all the colours to the same colour range. This is where GDS Plus colour groups will help you. On special assets you'll find isolated colour groups which you can use to change the colour of specific asset components. Look at this security camera. Here we can set the light to a different colour. We can set the body and set the lens to different colours too. Notice how the glass stays the same. Colour groups are specially crafted to keep in mind necessary colour changes, so not all assets will have colour groups. On GDS Plus assets, you can use the colour toggle switches to add colour changes to both the fill and the strokes of an asset. Only the fill and not the stroke, or the stroke and not the fill. If you get into a mess while changing colour, GDS Plus lets you re-establish the original colours of each colour group, including the master group. Some GDS Plus assets also contain a special feature called toggle groups. Toggle groups are like selectables from before, but instead of simply turning on and off selected asset features, they can control whole groups of features. To illustrate this, I've gone ahead and uploaded this updated version of the power pill from the site. Here you can see me toggling each pattern. As each pattern is selected, the other patterns are hidden. You can see that this pattern is also available as a colour group, giving us complete control over every aspect of this asset. So now that you've seen the basic features, part of the magic of GDS Plus is that it will let you build out new assets from existing assets in no time at all. Here I'm adding a parachute to a crate using the crates pack and the parachute pack. These assets will be released at the time of GDS Plus release. I simply import both scenes into a new scene, do my stroke and colour balancing to my taste and then delete the things that I don't need. I then resize the scene to the assets and hit the E key to export a ping. As well as drag and drop items, I also plan to release drag and drop themed building packs. Look at this platform style tree creator pack. See how quickly I can create new trees. With stroke balancing, you can easily make everything fit and work harmoniously. And with colour groups, we can make any tree in any season. Combining GDS Plus features gives us the power to create truly flexible assets. 
Here's an example of a GDS Plus tile set. Look at the amount of tile sets you can produce from one single tile set pack. Furthermore, some tile set platforms and bases will be interchangeable, allowing for further expansion. Here, I remove the top from tile set pack 3 and import the top from tile set pack 2. See how they work together. GDS Plus also has a special tile set slicing option that will allow you to slice and extract tile sets to create your own tile maps. And with grid snapping, you can use tiles to build static scenes. Another amazing feature of GDS Plus is something called Toggle Packs. Toggle Packs are special packs that I can design that will allow you to create new assets from selectable layers. Here's an example of a Toggle Pack. This is the Sword Pack. Here you can see me designing new swords simply by clicking on Layers. The Sword Pack also has all the special features of GDS Plus assets. Look at how specific parts of the sword have colour groups. Here I'm changing the colour of the blade and the blade fuller. Here you can see me change the colour of this gem on the pommel. As well as that the sword parts also have further toggling elements. Look at how I can switch the shape of this gem. And because it's GDS Plus, there's nothing stopping me from editing the side of the sword components, importing new components to add to the sword, and balancing the strokes. So there you have it. This is the current state of GDS Plus. I'm hoping to release a public alpha in January. If you'd like to test it out, come and let me know on the Discord. Thanks for watching.